Greetings Fly Tires, Chris Maholka here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a nice little folded foam minnow. It's a simple pattern to tie and has a little bit more craft work than tying. So let's get started. The hook I'm using is a Mustad 33903 size 2. This hook has a kink in the shank and it's usually used for poppers. What the kink does is it prevents materials from rotating around the hook shank. That's why I'm using that with my foam. Then we're going to use some silver gray nylon and some black nylon. This can be fish hair or whatever type of material you have. Just I like to have a straight rigid material instead of marabou because it tends to act a little bit better on the surface since this is a floating fly. And then eighth inch fly foam. This is uh, the kind that comes from like Michael's Craft Store or Joanne's Fabrics. It's eighth inch foam sold as foamies and a couple different names and some white thread and those are the basic materials that will get you into a fly that will catch fish. We're going to start our white thread and we're going to put the tail on this fly. And you don't want to build it much bulk because you're putting the foam over the top of this and you don't want to have big lumps in the foam. So we're going to take a little of our nylon and pull some out and double it over and you want the tail to be about as long as the body of the fly. So we're going to go about like that. Then we're going to take the front and we're going to cut it off and wrap over that. You also want to make sure this stays on the top of the hook shank. Then when you get to the back, you want to prop this up a little bit so it stays up high in the foam. And the easiest way to do that is just to hold it up, go under it with a thread, three or four wraps, and I'm just I'm just faster than the, the material is coming back down. I'm getting a wrap in there. And so then when I pull them all up, it makes that tail stand up off the back of the fly. Then we're going to put our crest color in by doing the same thing. Just folding over some material. Measuring the length out. Cutting off the excess. putting it in a position just the tips and getting a hold of it with the thread. I'm holding it up as I'm wrapping over it so it stays on top and the thread just slides right down the material until it meets, meets the fly body. I'm going to tie this off with a couple half hitches. You can do whip finish or however you prefer but this is just going to go underneath the foam so it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to stop the thread from unwinding. And we can take our material and go out here and just kind of roughly cut to get the tails lined up. That's the basic tying part of the fly. Now we'll move on to the foam. One other thing I forgot to mention was you'll need some kind of an adhesive, a, a rapid bond adhesive. I like this tight bond, the instant wood adhesive. I have an allergy to super glue, the real strong regular super glue in the little tubes and if I breathe the fumes it really causes congestion and problems in my chest. This tight bond wood adhesive doesn't seem to have the smell and the fumes that some of the other super glues do. So I tend to use this. Um, I can't say that it doesn't have any fumes. It probably does, but it's not as bad as the, as the small tube stuff. To make the bodies on this fly, I'm going to use some of the white foam because I used black and silver on the tail. And what I have found works the best is just to take and measure the foam from behind the eye of the hook to about where the tail is covered up and put a mark on it. If you do this on both ends of the material, then I have found it's really easy just to take a pair of scissors and cut from mark to mark and make a piece of foam that's going to be exactly the right width to go from just behind the eye of the hook to where I started my tying. Now this is a lot more than you need. It just takes a small piece to fold over. So I like to cut it in little chunks, basically squares. And I'll show you why you, you keep the pieces long here in a moment. You don't want to cut it really small where it just makes the fold. You want it to be longer, but still out of that one strip of material, there's enough there for two, four, six flies. So out of a piece, a large piece, there's probably 60 flies in a, in a piece of foam for around 60 cents. Now that we've got our foam cut, we could just take it and lay it in there and fold the foam over, but it tends to make a larger lump at the front where the fold is. 
So what we're going to do is, I'm going to take this piece of foam, and I'm going to fold it over so it's evenly matched on the sides. A pair of sharp scissors, and I'm going to go right down the fold. I'm going to very carefully cut just a little bit off. And you just want to take little shavings, little little bitty cuts there. You don't want to cut completely through that two millimeter foam. And if you do it correctly, when you lay the foam back out, you have a little groove that goes the length of the foam. Now what that does is when you fold the foam this way, that fold, that little cut you just made, allows the foam to fold tighter together and give you a, a smoother body than having that big lump at the top. So now that we've got that done, we're going to apply our glue, and I've got my wood glue here. And I'm going to go right down the middle and apply a little bit in that V that I cut out for the shank of the hook. And then I'm going to start on both sides and just do some swirlies, and I'm going to cover the, all the foam on both sides. And the reason you do this is because when you squeeze this together, there are going to be some places that you haven't managed to cover with adhesive, but by swirling it around and squishing it, you're going to coat the inside of that foam evenly with material. So now I'm just going to lay this in so the eye of the hook sticks out one side, the back of the hook sticks out the other, and I'm going right down that groove I cut. Then I'm going to fold my foam up and let the extra glue squish out. Now if I've done everything right, I haven't got too much glue on there that I've, I'm squishing it out all over the place, but after about 10 seconds, that should be secure and held together. A little bit loose there yet. This glue cures by squeezing out the oxygen and contacting the other side. Now once you get this glued up, if for some reason the foam on the front or back hasn't attached to the other side, it's real easy to just take a straight pin and get a little bit of glue on that from your bottle and put it down the split where it's not sealed and hold it together again. Or if you're doing a bunch, most foam tires I know have a whole bunch of these office clips around. You just clip it like that so the eye of the hook and the bend of the hook are both tail are both sticking out. That will hold the foam clamped until that sets. Now, of course, once that clamp comes off, it takes a little while for your foam to come back. It's got a little crease in it, but that will go away very shortly. So the next thing we do is we're going to trim the foam. And the simplest way I have found to cut these in any minnow body is to start about equal to the eye of the hook and just do about a 45 degree angle into the back. So you're like that. Then once that cut is made, you do pretty much the same thing on the front up to behind the eye of the hook. Well, it's got a 90 degree angle there now where I've made my two cuts. Then it's very easy to go from the front and just kind of come in on the, the front of it and round it out like that. And again, toward the front where you can get your scissors in there to work. And I'm just, as I'm kind of pushing as I'm cutting, and that gives me a nice bellied fly. It might be a little bit fat. We can always trim more off, but basically working in any, whether it be fly tying, any occupation is you can always cut more off, but it's very hard to put more back on. So let's go with that, and I'll show you how to smooth this belly up. So I've got a little alcohol burner going here, and the reason you use alcohol burner or even a cigarette lighter is good is because it doesn't have as many fumes and smoke coming up like a match would, for instance, because you don't want to get your foam dirty or smoky. So what we're going to do is we're going to melt these little areas, and we're not going to go above it because that is where the smoke is coming up, and also it's hard to control the heat up here. We're just going to go in very carefully on the sides like this, beside it and let that flame just kind of come right up against the foam and then we can kind of smooth it down and that smooths out those edges and makes it nice and round. A little bit more on that back part, smooth it down. There's a body that's now ready to continue with. So as it sits right now, 
this would catch fish. It would float on the surface, the tail would do its thing when you stripped it slowly along, and it would catch fish. But we're fly tires. We live to put more stuff on the hook. So I'm going to show you how to decorate this to make it look more realistic and like an actual little bait fish. When you want to decorate foam and make it look really good, there are two ways that I have found that are really simple. One is Sharpies, and I found that you can buy a big pack, bulk pack of Sharpies at Walmart, some of the other stores where it's a whole variety of colors, a lot less expensively than you can buy individual colors. Plus, you never know where another color might come in handy. The other way to color them is nail polish. These are available at Walmart. I tend to like the Sally Hansen brand. They, they tend to do really well in foam. They don't dissolve it like some nail polish as well. Big range of colors. Get them on sale for a buck 19 to a buck 49. So the, the price is very reasonable. If you just want to do simple decorations on your foam, it's fairly straightforward. Things like a fine Sharpie work really well because you can make little patterns like on the back of a minnow and it works on any color foam you happen to use. But if you get to lighter colors like yellows, like if you're in a little brook trout or a brown trout, this might work really well to make a little yellow dot on your white. But if you do it on the green, it doesn't show up. So that's where the nail polish comes in. And yellow is a really tough color to find in nail polish for some reason. Before we can do any decoration to this, it's best to seal the foam with something. And a couple things I found that work really well. One is this lure coat, lure and jig finish from Component Systems. Uh, it's a water-based product, doesn't smell, dries very quickly. Uh, you can get this online if you don't have access to that. You can use good old-fashioned Mod Podge. This is a pretty big container, it's pretty cheap. Uh, it's but it's thicker than you really want so you can take it and since it's a water-based product also you can mix it 50 50 with water and make a lot thinner product that will brush onto your fly a lot nicer and this just basically goes on you just brush it on your fly and allow it to dry before you start a decoration now if you're uh, Putting some type of finish on your fly, you need to rotate it. If you've watched my videos on rotation, you'll know that you want to rotate this fly at about a 45 degree angle so you don't get drips. If you don't have a rotator handy and you coat that, it's very easy to just take a pencil and do this with it while it rotates. And since these are water-based products, you can take this in and hit it with a hair dryer and in about 30 seconds, that finish will be dry and ready to decorate. When you color with nail polish, you don't want to just take the, the brush out and make a big glob on your on your fly. And always you know, start out with pieces like this and practice before you go to a pattern you, you've taken time to tie. But the easiest way to do it after it's shaken up is put a drop on a piece of plastic. And then use a bodkin. And this one isn't particularly sharp. You don't want a real sharp one because that won't pick up much material. We just pick up a drop on the end of your bodkin, hold it down in your foam, and it makes a nice little little bead of paint. And that also works, or nail polish, that also works on the green as well. Maybe tough to see on camera, but that leaves a nice little bitty dot of yellow on the foam. And where this really works well is if you want to get very detailed and make, for instance, a black dot on your minnow with the color on top of it. You let that sharpie dry really well and then take your yellow and now you can actually make a light colored dot on top of a black dot. That works very well for doing imitations where you've got a uh, fish that has black dots that are highlighted in with a color like your brook trout and your brown trout. We'll let that dry for just a minute there on the sharpie and then take our yellow paint and now you've got your dark dot and your light dot, your highlights in the center of your spot. When you do colors, this is a lot like oil painting or watercolors in that 
you want to start with the lightest color first. So we're going to start with our shell pink here. And I'm going to do this little one that I've got colored up like a little rainbow trout. I'm just going to go right down the side. I'm not going to brush long streaks. I'm going to just dab the end of the brush down at the side to make a little rainbow stripe. Go to the other side, do the same. Usually the brush holds enough. You don't even have to reload the brush. I guess this time I might. But brush it off. You don't want a whole lot on the end of the brush because you don't want big globs. You just want to leave a faint little stripe down the side. About like that. Now the color I have found that I like best for the tops of minnow patterns, especially the little rainbow trout, is a Sally Hansen number 625 called, I kid you not, Garage Band. So we're going to take this guy and we're just going to go right down the top and we're going to blend over and blend in just to the edge of that pink stripe down the side. Do the same on this side. It works best if you have the tip of the brush down toward the color you're blending with so you don't leave the big line from the back of the brush. And we're just going to blend it like that down to the pink and along the top. Now really for color on this guy, I'm not going to do much else to it. I'm going to put an eye on it and I'll show you how to do that and how to put some gills on him as well. But as far as dots or anything, a little rainbow trout, that's about as good as it gets right there. And when we coat it again, it'll look like that. After our nail polish is dried, we're going to put eyes on this guy and I'm using little two millimeter diameter 3D eyes. We're going to set one on this side. And you got to remember that you let one side dry before you do the other side. So once that side is dry, I'm going to turn him over and I'm going to do the other eye. But when I do any painting, I'm going to go one side and let it dry before I go to the other. So now his eye is on there. We're going to put on a gill. And this is just good old Tester's model airplane paint. And you can use it on this foam because we have sealed it. So I'm going to shake that bottle up and open it. And I don't want the bottle. I want the cap for this. So I'm going to take the cap off and just set it right there. This is not painting the wall. This is painting a small item. So all we need is just a little bit of paint from the inside of that cap on our needle. I just touched the needle or straight pin to that paint and got just a touch on the on the end and I'm just going to draw a little line down behind the eye for a gill slit. And that's all it needs. Now we have to make sure this side dries before we turn it over or it will stick to our work surface. Once the nail polish and the gills were dry on this little guy I gave him another coat of the um, component system lure coat and now you have a finished little rainbow trout pattern. Now you're not limited to just making little rainbow trout. By changing the color of the tails and the color of the foam, and I used on the back of this, I used a gray Sharpie. Gray works great for everything because it doesn't change the color, it just darkens it. I have taken this little green one, put a stripe down his back, used my different colors of nail polish, and I've made a little brook trout or brown trout pattern. So the limitations are only basically on your imagination. You change the color of the tail, the color of the foam, and the color of the decorations, and you can come up with pretty much any little minnow you want to tie.